Is it audible? It must be audible, mother. Yes, ma'am, it is audible, ma'am. All right, all right, we will. Uh... I am Nirukuma Dinaka, second year LLM JSS Law College. Team it pleasure to welcome the gathering. Good morning to each one of you present today. It is a moment of extreme pleasure to welcome the guests who are present here to attend the special lecture, jointly organized in continuation with the MOU between JSS Law College Mysuru and SDM Law College Mangaluru. I offer my regards to all the dignitaries and the people joining us. I warmly welcome the Chief Executive Professor K. S. Suresh and Principal Professor Dr. S. Nataraju, JSS Law College, and Principal Dr. Taranath, SDM Law College, in their absence here. I also welcome all the faculty, Mr. Madhukumar, Systems Manager, and his team, the PG as well as the UG students. On behalf of the institution, I convey my heartfelt welcome to the speaker, Mr. Karthik Shantukumar, Corporate Legal Counsel. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and coming over for the special lecture. The schedule of the special lecture will focus on the topic of understanding data privacy. I wish this seminar enlightens us and provides us with the approaches to deal with the problems of tomorrow. Once again, a very warm welcome to all of you gracing your presence at this lecture. Without further ado, I would like to call upon Professor Dr. N. Vanishri to introduce the speaker. A very pleasant morning to all uh, the senior teachers, uh, dignitaries, uh, and my beloved students, and uh, specifically the speaker of the, uh, of the day. Uh, so I deem it a great pleasure to introduce my own student and uh, the corporate legal uh, uh, counsel, who is the speaker for the day, uh, very briefly, because he's, uh, he, uh, I mean, if uh, it'll take a very long time, I would be taking away his time if I go along, along, uh, I mean, with a long introduction. So he has, uh, he's got significant expertise with uh, garnered in drafting, reviewing, and negotiating commercial agreements and license agreements, contract compliance, handling contractual disputes, managing risks for financial agreements project scoping, legal research and legal training, steering the trademark registration process and development of internal process and methodologies. He further distinguishes himself with uh, having uh, varied legal skills, excellent communication skills, strong managerial skills and uh, dem has uh, demonstrated at various forums ability to take on responsibility head on. And uh, uh, his regarding his work experience, He's been an independent counsel uh, and also uh, teaching, which is his passion. Uh, very much, he very much uh, um, teaches at our own, at, at our college, assists in corporate uh, corporates in reviewing, drafting, and negotiating, advising the startup companies in contractual compliance and procedures. Like I said before, uh, drafting of manufacturing authorization forms and other uh, uh, broad, uh, other uh, areas, allied areas. He's having a, a rich experience. His work for the Cisco India Private Limited, Bengaluru, Infosys Limited, Bangalore, Goldman Sachs Private Limited, uh, Bangalore. Has been a lead spe uh, specialist uh, in the mass market agreement. Uh, sorry, ma has mastered in uh, agreement risk management. Worked for uh, Cognizant Technologies Private Limited, Chennai. Uh, has been a specialist in the loan uh, syndication and other aspects with Goldman Sachs Private Limited, Bengaluru, and has uh, been a senior uh, associate legal in the Advantage Global Services Private Limited, Bengaluru, and Excite Corp Services Private Limited, uh, Bangalore. Like I just uh, started off with his introduction, it goes on and on, but I don't want to take away his time. And uh, we are very happy to have him here this morning and uh, uh, give his uh, share his experiences uh, in this area of uh, data privacy. Over to you, Karthik. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, a uh, hearty welcome to everyone who's present here and to those who have joined in online. 
thank you so much. So the objective of today's session, you know, let me move to the session directly in the interest of time. The objective of today's session is not only to give you the legal nuances of what data privacy is. Of course, that is something that I think most of you have studied, okay, or most of you know. But moreover, it is to help you understand the general concept of what data privacy is, right? Because you know, my 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 manager always used to say, understand the concept like a layman, and then it becomes easy for you to understand. I mean, to apply the legal principles like a lawyer. Okay. So today, of course, we will be touching upon the legal uh, principles, but more more than that, what we will do is we will look into the general concepts on on the basics. Okay. And and what is data privacy? How is it impacting a normal citizen's life? Okay. And how is your data protected? What do companies do to protect your data? When your data is stolen, what do they do with your data? Okay. So let's let's try to kind of understand the important concepts, and then we we'll go into the legal concepts. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. So this is my question to you, right? Now, throughout this session, I'll be using terms like data privacy, personal information, sensitive personal information, or sensitive personal data. What do you think? Is, is there a difference between all these three terms, or are all these three terms the same? Can, can someone tell me what data, I mean, at least uh, once present here, can you tell me what personal information is? Any idea? Or is it the same? At least all, are all the three terms the same, or is it different? Take a guess. Personal information as in uh, our name or our uh, personal address or yes. our card details. Like, right. So something which helps identify you, right, as a, as a person. You're right. According to me, all three concepts or all three definitions are interrelated to each other, right? Data privacy is nothing but the process where you protect your personal information. But what is personal information? Right. Personal information is something that is helpful in identifying a uh, in in like, in identifying a particular person. It can be anything, right? There's no hard defined rule that this is your personal information. For example, your 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 photo, your address, your mobile number, your date of birth. All of that, if it helps in identifying you, it is personal information. And there is no hard fact rule. Perfect example is your Aadhaar card, right? Few years back, we did not have our Aadhaar card, but today Aadhaar card is one of our biggest identifier of, of personal information, right? So today it can be other card, tomorrow it can be a health card that is going to be introduced by the government, right? And that can also act as a, as a perfect uh, example of personal information. As I said, there is no hard fact rule. It can be what it is today, or it can be non-existent and it can be introduced tomorrow as well. Now, what is sensitive personal data? But the reason for me to kind of bifurcate both is because the law specifies it. In India, we have something called as a data privacy rules, right? We don't have a dedicated law, but we have this data privacy rules. And under data privacy rules, there is a bifurcation between personal information and sensitive personal data. Now, as the word itself suggests, sensitive personal data is something which is sensitive. It, is, it has more value than your personal information, right? It is more critical. Examples, biometric information, your medical information, your financial information. Would you agree with me if I say that your, your financial information is more important than your photographs? Is it important than your photographs? I would say yes, right? It's more critical. Your photographs would come under personal information. Your financial information would come under sensitive person data, right? If, would you agree if I say your medical information is more important than your address? Obviously, yes, right? Your biometric information is more important than, uh, than uh, your mobile number? Obviously, yes, your Aadhaar card is more important than your mobile number, right? And that is why the government has, or the law has actually defined certain information as sensitive personal data where extra caution and care to kind of protect that data. Okay, so uh, typically sensitive personal data is a subset of personal information, but it is more critical than what your personal information is. I'll, I'll kind of, uh, yeah. There it is, data privacy, right? What is data privacy? Data privacy is where you protect your personal data. What is personal information? Information which is either directly or indirectly helps identifying a natural person, not a juristic person. And that is what defines or distinguishes personal information from confidential information. Confidential information can relate to both natural person and juristic person, right? But whereas personal information is information which is actually 
helpful in identifying a natural person and that is more important and sensitive personal data as i said is a subset of personal information which is more sensitive and critical now i some of you already gave me some examples right and i also gave you some examples of as to what uh, sensitive personal data would mean there you go your name your date of birth your email your photos your addresses everything helps in identifying you right they are personal information now look at sensitive person data right your passwords your financial information your medical information your sexual orientation right and uh, uh, the last one is uh, uh, of course your uh, financial information which is already there right all these all these do you do you agree with me that the one on your right which is red in color is more important than than the one on your left which is green in color yes right and that is why there is a distinction under law as well to kind of you know uh, differentiate between personal information sensitive and sensitive personal data having said that protection is important for both right protection is info just because you know there is def uh, definition under law you can't take your personal information for granted right now can you tell me which which under which uh, provision would aadhar come in would it come under uh, personal information or sensitive person data obviously sensitive person data right why biometric information right biometric information is very sensitive and your aadhar card would also be uh, under sensitive person data that is why it is now our fundamental right okay let's move on i thought i'll give you some history and insights as i said the general concepts right uh, data privacy is is gaining popularity but it has a very old history right it is as old as for 50 years right it, the first data protection law was passed in 1970 in hess in germany right uh, most of us were not even born when when this law was passed but of course in countries like ours it's slowly gaining uh, popularity and some insights according to the united nations data 128 countries of the 194 countries have legislation to protect your personal data now legislation can mean anything it's not not necessary that you should have a dedicated law right even in india we don't have a dedicated law it's fragmented it's, it's in bits and pieces right but we have some measures like that almost about 128 countries have it which leaves only 65 countries right and and uh, they are also in the process of of getting this done and i'll tell you in the next slides as to why this is important right if if you want your uh, if you want liberalization if you want globalization why uh, data protection is very very important and the last one if we are talking about data privacy we cannot afford to ignore gdpr right the general data protection regulation which was passed in 2018 by the european union one of the stringent laws drafted till date right companies fear it individuals fear it if you have to go and take a data Uh, out of a person who's who's living in uh, uh, the European Union, right? There are so much restrictions that you you actually uh, compromise that data, right? Your life is at stake. I mean, you you'll have to pay such a penalty that you would rather go behind bars than pay in penalty. Okay, we'll we'll touch about GDPR because our our PDP bill. We have a new bill that is introduced in our parliament, right? It's called the uh, Protection of uh, Data Privacy, right? It is in the Lok Sabha now. That is also based on GDPR. is one of the most important legislations uh, that's come up okay next they call it the next big thing right most of them say data privacy is the next big thing i definitely agree with them and i also say it is the next big thing you know why of course now it is our fundamental right right we'll we'll touch upon it in detail when we discuss the case law uh, we will soon have a dedicated law on data privacy right the pdp bill which is now in the lok sabha is soon expected to become a, a law so we will have a dedicated law and and the next one is important according to data by ernest and young the company it says the digital economy of india is expected to reach 1 trillion dollars by 22 can you beat that 1 trillion dollars by 2022 so you can ask me why is this data important the more and more digital economy grows the more and more of your information is on digital platform and the more and more of your digital information is on the platform the more and more it becomes important to protect right i'll tell you why it is important to protect right so look at your daily lives right starting from your facebook to your linkedin to your instagram to gmail to yahoo to paytm to uh, amazon pay everything has your personal information 
right? So we grow, we grow digitally, but when you grow digitally, you know, information also gets sacrificed to a certain extent. And that is what we're trying to protect here, and which is, which is more important. And that is why I say it's the next big thing. And there is also an estimate that in the next five to 10 years, lawyers, both practicing and corporate, of course, corporates already handle this in a day-to-day -day basis, but even practicing lawyers will be filing cases for data protection on a, on a normal basis, on a frequent basis. Now it is between corporates and corporates, individuals and corporates, going forward it will be between individuals and individuals once the pdp law is in, is in place it will be between individuals and individuals individuals and corporations so more and more case laws would also be fought by normal lawyers to protect data privacy of citizens let's move on now this is the most important slide of all so why protect your data you know, most of them ask me now what is the reason of protecting the data right it is just my name my email id my my address and my phone number why is it so important to be protected? Now, I've put in a few points as to tell you why is it important. And towards the end, I'll leave the decision to you to decide whether you need to protect your data or not. And I'll, I'll corroborate my, my uh, sayings with, with evidences on, on day to day events. First one is preventing government from spying. Have uh, any of you heard of the Pegasus controversy, which recently happened? Right? Pegasus controversy, Pegasus is an Israeli software, okay, which is used for spying, right? So there is allegation or there are allegations that it was used against our politicians, against our uh, opposition leaders, against judges, against journalists, against election commissioners and whatnot for spying against them, okay? Now you can ask me, where is, I'm not a VIP, right? So am I, even I'm not a VIP, right? How is it important to me? Today it is, it is them. Tomorrow it can be ordinary citizens like you, right? Today, if, if VIP is today your ordinary citizen, tomorrow you can be a VIP, right? Having said that, even an ordinary citizen can get affected, right? The uh, government, if, if, if spying is allowed and tomorrow, even, even you can be spied at it from both from a, uh, both governments, from central government and state governments, and it'll become an ordinary mechanism to kind of spy against you. And protecting your data is actually the most important thing of, of everything. Right, Pegasus controversy, and again, so you can still ask me, what is the what is the relation of me sacrificing my data? Right now, if I say that I want to spy a particular VIP, or I want to spy a particular judge, or I want to spy a particular journalist, is it easy for you and me to get their numbers, mobile numbers? Is it easy for me to you and me to get their information? Right. So where do we get it? Information is bought online. There is something called as a dark web. Right. It is, it is a hidden internet website where you and me cannot access. You need specialized softwares to actually access the dark web. That is where the underground mafia is, right? Selling drugs, selling um, arms and ammunition, right? Selling personal data. So your data is taken. I, I have a perfect example, which I'll come later. Your, the, your da data is taken from these uh, 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 platforms or databases and sold in the dark web. And when you have data, obviously you can spy on anyone that you have. Yahoo case in 2012, 3 billion users data was stolen. Twice the population of India, can you beat that? If you have the information of 3 billion people in your hands, you can do wonders, right? And that is the impact of information. It is more valuable than you, right? Look into the next one. Influencing individuals by using their data. Now you can ask me, how is it even possible? You're using my data to influence me. Right? But I, I don't call it data. Your, your, your name, your ID, your phone number, your, your address is not you. It's your personality. It's your personality trait. Right? It's, it's your personality trait. It defines you. Right? It is not just your personal information. Cambridge Analytica. Have you heard of Cambridge Analytica case? Right? It's a very recent case, few months old. Right? Uh, few, where Cambridge Analytica is a company in UK. Right? What they did was they took information from Facebook. Okay, more than 20 million users, if I'm correct. They took information from Facebook and they created a database. And that database was used to in political campaigns. I'll give you a simple example. Let's say we are in Karnataka. Okay, we have JDS in Congress. Let's say I'm the head of Congress in Karnataka. I want information. If I have the information which says which districts are strong in Congress support and which districts are not strong in Congress support, what I would do, I would put my heart and soul in convincing people where I have less support to actually vote for me, 
right? If I have their email IDs, if I have their mobile numbers, I will send an information as to what wrong the other party has done, right? I will send what we will do, what we will do, we can come to government and we, I can topple governments, right? Data, data can actually topple governments and that is what happened. It is an allegation, it's still under investigation that Cambridge Analytica data was used in, in actually political campaigns. It is, it is as, as important as it is, right? Your data to actually influence you. Now you agree, right? It is your data to kind of, they're using your data to influence you. The next one is what I was talking about, sale of personal information, right? About two to three months back, uh, big basket, about 20 million users uh, data was stolen, right? And it was sold openly on the dark web. It was sold openly on dark net. Right? People who wants the data whom, for whatever reason you wanted, right, can actually go to dark web and, and, and buy it. Right? And, and we're not able to do anything much because we don't have a stronger law. Of course, technology also, we need to be really strong. But this is a, a, a classic example. Right? And, and the last one, which you're all aware of, stealing your data, right? phishing, spam messages. Okay, I'll give you a simple example. Six months back, I got a new mobile number. I hardly use it. It's a new number. It's not even a reused number. It's a new Airtel number with six series, right? After three months, I get spam, spam messages. How is it even possible? I hardly use it. I don't even use it for online uh, uh, shopping or online, online sales, right? Maybe my data is compromised. Maybe the company has sold my number to someone else, right? To, for marketing purposes, maybe Airtel has sold it. I don't know. But yes, that is how you get all your phishing emails and your, or you get all your spam messages. Right. That is why data is everything. Right. It is more valuable than you. Now, now I've I've given some of the instances. Now, do you do you still think that your data should be protected? Are you saying, ah, no, fine, let them have my data. I have no issues. Right? I I leave that to you. Right. But I I leave that to you to decide. But this is what happens when your data gets compromised. Okay. It's a big market now. It's a big mafia now. And 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 the laws struggling to kind of stop it. Okay, next one. Now, a little bit touch upon data privacy and, and intellectual property. Often, as I said in the beginning, it is confused with confidential information or trade secrets. As I said, personal information, do not confuse it with confidential information and trade secrets. Your personal information is, is a manifestation of your personality. Right? It can come only under, it can come only for a natural person. That is why it is called personal information. Whereas confidential information is more wider. It can apply even for a juristic person. So there is no relation between trademarks, state secrets, and confidential information and your data privacy. Even when you draft agreements, right? Always keep your data privacy separate from confidential information clause. Don't mix both, right? There is a huge impact to it as well. Now, the, but there is only one connection. Okay, one connection that two by based on precedence under Copyright Act. So there are judgments which says if any person creates a database of, of, of people, for example, I create a database of how many students have joined the session today. I take your mobile numbers, I take your address and I create a database. Am I taking your personal information? Obviously, yes, I'm taking your personal information, right? And the database can be for anything. It can be for this purpose, it can be for election purposes, it can be for financial purposes, it can be for medical purposes, it can be for anything, right? But if a person creates a database, it is a literary work. Okay, it is defined as literary work. It comes under copyright. And if it is compromised, if it is breached, it is breach of intellectual property. And section 63B provides for punishment, imprisonment up to three years and fine of a 50,000 or two lakhs, right? That is the only relationship you have between intellectual property and data privacy, where you can actually ask for a breach of copyright. Only if it is a literary work where you created a database using personal information. But apart from that, please do not keep confidential information or, and personal information together. Always keep it separate. Okay. Some technical problem. Sorry. The angle of the slides are not getting changed. Is it? Is it? Uh, you want me to we'll call him you can stop sharing and resharing. Okay. So where do I do the future? Uh, 
just amazing. Uh, can you see the slides now? Sorry, we heard that some of you are not able to see the change of slides. Can you see it now? Are you able to see the slides that I changed? Uh, uh, Dr. Shahima, ma'am, uh, are you able to see the slides, the change of slides? Uh, sorry, ma'am, I was not able to hear you. Can you please repeat it? Yes, the slides are different slides. You are able to view it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure. Okay. On this one, right? Yeah, on, from the beginning. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, just for the interest of anyone, so I'll just give a quick recap of, of, of what we did, right? We, we, we saw what personal data and what data privacy and what sensitive personal data is, right? Data privacy is where you protect your personal data. And according to law, we have separate definitions for personal data and um, sensitive personal data. Right? And sensitive personal data is, is, is more critical and it is more sensitive than your personal data. We looked into the history. Uh, the history says it's, it's, a, it's more than 50 years old. And, and it is also the next big thing okay? because of the, the way our digital economy is growing. The more and more of digital economy, the more of your information is online. And the more of your information is online, the more important it has become. It is to protect your information. Okay, And then... We, uh, we also saw the, uh, you know, why is it important to protect your data? Right? We saw day-to-day -day instances, okay? Uh, what they do with your data, right? It is used to influence you. It is, it is uh, actually, you can even topple garments with, with, with the data that, uh, that you typically have. And also it is sale of, sale of your data and using the same data to spam you, right? This is, this is heights, using your data, stealing your data and spamming you with the same data, right? And, and then we saw the difference of intellectual property and data privacy. There is actually no, there is no relationship between confidential information and it was, but now that we have a separate law in place, right? You always keep both separate because personal information always refers to a natural person and not a juristic person and, and confidential information is more than that, right? Um, the only relation being, of course, uh, the remedy under data privacy. If a database is created by a person Okay, and, and if that database uh, is, is about personal information, then it is called literary work. And if it is breached, then under Copyright Act, you can actually claim a remedy, which is imprisonment. Oh. Okay. Now, as I said, general concept, right? the business behind data production, there is a huge business behind data production, okay? As, as huge as what I show you in the slides, right? First one is company offering data production services. Right. Companies, big companies like Cisco to IBM to even startup companies are now offering data production services, right? Because of data theft, more and more companies, they don't know. They start a company, but they don't know how to protect their data. That is when you go to these companies and ask for them to protect your data. It is a big business now, right? Your cloud, storage and cloud, all those things. It's, it's, a, it's a huge business. Look at the next one, which is more interesting. Countries' economy rely on data centers. You know what data centers are? Right? Data centers are where your information is stored. For, for example, uh, if your information needs to be stored somewhere in servers, right? And those servers need to be kept in a particular place, right? And, and it has to be uh, maintained. Okay? And, and come, uh, we, have, we have one of the biggest facilities in China, which is a 200-acre data center. Right? I'll show you some of the slides. It is a 200-acre data center. Now, when you have these, your information protected in these servers, you need to maintain them, you need to cool them, right? I'll give you a simple example. When you go to the ATM, right? You have air conditioning. You think the air conditioning is for you? You think bank care for us so much? Definitely not. It's not for the men and women, it's for the machine out there, right? That server which is there in that ATM room is, is, is more valuable. It has, it has critical data, bank data, right? Now, if for a small room, there is an air conditioning, just imagine if you have to, cool an area of 200 acres, right? Look at the cost the company incurs. So now what companies are getting smart, they are going to cooler place, places. Finland, Sweden, Iceland, where the weather is normally cool. All you have to do is just maintain your servers there. The air conditioning cost has come down, right? So now Iceland is the biggest 
um, country for for data centers. Right? Iceland is is now banking on data centers for the economy, right? And the last one, economic liberalization, right? Now we talk about liberalization, globalization, privatization. Tomorrow you go and tell a Tesla, you go and tell a Amazon, you go and tell a, a, a Google that please come to India. We are, you know, please invest in India. Put your foreign direct investments in India, but we we don't protect your data. You think they'll come to India? Obviously, right? Only and uh, only when information is protected with these companies, okay, especially banking companies, right? Like your DBS, which recently came from Singapore. Right, banking companies from abroad would come and invest in India only when they know that their information is protected. If not, right, you can't even have your liberal. The economy does not grow. It is as simple as it is. Right. Now let's let's move on. Now, how is your personal data protected? Now let's go get to the practical aspect. How far do entities go to protect your your data? Right. You need to know how your data is protected. Right. I thought I'll put some slides for you because picture speaks. More than a thousand words, right? So you will understand it better. This is the Facebook's data center at Finland. Okay, this these pictures were released by Mark Zuckerberg himself, right? Finland is a is as I said is a cold country. So they moved to Finland, okay, and this is their facility where all their servers are located, right? And maybe if you have a Facebook account, your information is sitting there in Finland now, right? We'll we'll go on to the next slide. Right. This again is inside. These are the servers that I was talking about, right? The servers which actually protect your data, okay, where it is kept uh, kept safe. Now this one, the third one, the colorful one is the data center of Google. Now Google thought a some thought a little bit different. They said, why go, why travel thousands of miles away? Let's do something unique. This is their facility in US, where they actually cool servers using water. It's a water cooling plant to cool their servers. Right? Can you be that all of that mechanical engineering that has gone there just to protect our data? Okay, so it is data is that important. Some companies got even more innovative. Right? They used war bunkers. All the war bunkers that was left over uh, in, uh, in in the World War. Now they are using those war bunkers. This is a war bunker of a Swedish internet uh, internet company. Right? And you can see engineers working hundred feet below. So tomorrow, no matter what happens above the ground, your data is safe. Maybe you may not be alive, but your your data will be alive. Okay? They go to such far extent to kind of protect your data. And the best one is the next slide, right? The, the next, next one. Yeah, this one. This is very interesting, right? This data center again in the U.S. It is nuclear chemical and biological war, warfare proof right no matter even if the whole world comes to an end tomorrow this this data center will survive it has its own electronic electricity system it can survive for years together even without electricity from outside world right so tomorrow as i said even if the whole world is has come to an end this your data in this particular place will actually be sold so you actually have to pay if companies want to use it they pay it and the previous ones, the previous one, the red color door, right? They use blast proof doors to kind of protect your data. No matter what, what bombing happens, your data is still protected, right? So you pay a price, you get to store your data in these uh, data centers. Next one, more innovative. Microsoft is experimenting underwater data center, right? Forget about land, forget about going to colder countries. I'll go to the nearest ocean, put my data center below the ocean, as simple as it is, right? And they are experimenting it. Now, next one, is there a data center in India? Do you know if there is a data center in India? We'll go to the next slide. Yes, we do have. It is, this, it is the largest in Asia uh, or the biggest in Asia and the second, second biggest in the world. It is in Navi, Mumbai. It's called Yota. It's part of the Hiranandani group. Okay, it's biggest in terms of your capacity, right? It can, it, it is, uh, it can store as much as data. It is the second largest in the world. I'm not sure many of us know this, right? So we are also uh, equal to, to other countries when it comes to technology, right? So this is how your data is actually protected practically. Now let it, let's get into the legal framework of it, okay? Which is again, more important. Now there are three things in India to protect uh, data, uh, personal data. One is your Information Technology Act. The second one is the Information Technology Reasonable Security Practices and Procedures and sensitive personal data or information rules 2011. In short, we call it the data privacy rules. 
Okay. And last, the historical judgment that we had saying that it's a fundamental right. We'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Now, Information Technology Act 2000, you have two sections which covers it. This, this, this was uh, in 2009, section 43A and 72A was introduced, especially to protect your personal information. It says any body corporate negligently, okay, possesses details or handles, okay, they can do whatever you, they want with your personal data and it results in wrongful gain or wrongful loss to a particular individual or a particular entity, okay, uh, a particular entity which has personal information of individuals, then you will have to pay damages to the affected party. And what are the damages that is provided under section 72A? Okay, the punishment is up to 5 lakhs and 3 years imprisonment, which is very, very less. And that is why, that is why, you know, in our country, we, we are still looking to kind of make it more strong, like what the GDPR is, which we will come into uh, uh, in, a, in a few minutes. But yes, these are the these are the two important sections that you always need to remember, right? Obviously, this will be replaced. But again, as of now, these are the two direct laws that we have, which which talk about personal information. Now, the next one: What does data privacy rules do? Right? As as the name itself suggests, data private uh, protection rules it it provides for reasonable security and uh, pra security practices and procedures where a person or entity collects data receives data, possesses data, stores data, or deals or handles data. Okay, it tells you how you need to deal it, how you need to kind of um, store it. Of course, it, it does not go in detail. It is not as sophisticated as, as what other countries have. But of course, we do have rules. Okay, we, we, uh, as I said, we do have something to ensure that uh, today someone takes our personal information, it needs to be protected. And that is what your data privacy rule says. Let's, let's move on to the next one. Again, the most important one of all, right? This is more important because, you know, recently in, in, in Justice Putisami versus Union of India in 2017, okay, it declared that it, the judgment came that it was a, a nine be, uh, bench, uh, constitution bench declared that it is, our, it is our fundamental right now, right? The Aadhaar Act was questioned. Of course, the, the court said, there's nothing wrong with the Aadhaar Act. Aadhaar has all safety measures to kind of uh, protect it. But, but none of the laws today or none of the judge, previous judgments said that it was a fundamental right, but this judgment said, right? If you see the other two case laws, MP Sharma in 1954, Karak Singh in, uh, in 1960, these were the two big cases that dealt uh, data privacy. But in, in that, those cases, they said there is, data privacy is invaded. This is what the Supreme Court said. Data privacy is invaded. But that does not say that data privacy is your fundamental right. It does not fall under Article 21 of your personal liberty or um, your 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 life, right? And 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 both of that, if you see, M P Sharma was an eight judge bench, right? Karak Singh was a five or a six judge bench, and that is why this time the Chief Justice thought it was important to have frame a constitution bench with a nine judge bench. And that's why you have a bigger judge uh, bench to kind of decide this case. And it clearly said that it is now your fundamental right under Article 21, right? No one can take your data. That is why nowadays you need not give your Aadhaar card just like that, unless and until it is really needed, right? It is your it is your fundamental right. And, and there is also a survey and study that after the judgment came out, a lot of companies, especially banking companies, are willing to come and invest in India. Okay, because previously they did not have a, a, a prop. We had a legal remedy, but it was not strong enough. Right. At least now they have a uh, they have a say to say that it is people's fundamental right. Okay, and uh, they can actually fight for it. Of course, our PDP law is in place. If you can go to the next slide, it shows the journey till date. Right. Your, in 2009, Section 43A and 72A was introduced, right? The data privacy rules, uh, of course, it came in 2009, but amended in 2011. The privacy judgment came in 2017. And now, in 2019, the personal data protection bill is in the Lok Sabha. It is under discussion. And hopefully, we get to have a law soon. And if we get to have a law soon, it will be on the grounds of GDPR, which I will talk. We just have two more slides, okay? Now, I wanted to kind of, you know, I don't know whether you can read it, but I wanted to kind of show you as to in contracts or any agreements that you take, or even when you go online, uh, Paytm, Amazon, uh, Amazon Pay, and when you subscribe the services, 
right click trap there's something called as terms and conditions privacy policy i i wanted to show you as to uh, you know how it actually looks how how a, a clause actually looks uh, or how it would actually read when you talk about uh, uh, when you talk about uh, um, clauses right there are two two things that come into mind one is your yeah yes one is your data controller and the data processor you will see this in all your agreements or at least 90% of your agreements right it's very simple data controller is the person who has control over your data if i am taking your data for processing something if i am taking your data today your information today for the purpose of uh, this uh, just to know how many people have come for the seminar right what do you become do you become the data controller or do you become the data processor what do you become you are controlling the data you become the data controller i am processing your data i am taking your data for some purpose i become the data processor right always keep these two concepts in mind because in practical purposes all your contracts will have this now look at the look at the first clause right your first clause talks about personal processing personal data i'll just read it but look into the ones in red data processor shall ensure okay if i am collecting your data i shall ensure that in each case access of personal information of data controller uh, under the agreement is strictly limited to those individuals who need to know or access the relevant personal information as strictly necessary for the purposes of the agreement and to co comply with applicable laws in protecting it now there are three things here three important things one is if i take your data first thing is i can't just just because i i take your consent and take your data i cannot share it to the whole world i need to share it to the only people who need to know it's it's called need to know basis people who need to know only they need to use it right people who need to access it only they need to access it and then it should be only for the purpose of the agreement if i am collecting your data for uh, financial purposes i cannot use it for medical purposes right it should be for financial purposes only if i'm using it for medical purposes i should again take your consent right and you should comply with applicable laws right that is you are processing personal data now look into the next one data security data processor shall in relation to the personal information of data controller implement appropriate technical and organizational measures to ensure a level of security appropriate to that risk including as appropriate the measures required under applicable law applicable law will actually be defined it's a defined term it will be defined but here what is more important is implementing appropriate technical and organizational measures it comes under your rules right if you go to gdpr it is very strict right it's cost it's gdpr even goes to the extent of telling what technology is needed to protect the data right so it you need to implement appropriate technical measures you can't just take a data and throw it in a corner or put it in your drawer right and tomorrow if someone steals it from there you are responsible you need to ensure there is proper measures to protect it okay and the last one data processor shall notify that the data controller without undue delay upon data processor becoming aware of any breach related to the personal information of data controller and data processor shall take commercially reasonable measures to assist in the investigation mitigation and remediation now what is interesting here is it says the moment there is a breach you know someone has stolen your data first thing whether you like it or not you have to tell the owner of it you have to tell the data controller so i take your information today someone has stolen it i'll have to tell you the first thing now after telling the next thing what do you normally do mitigate it right mitigate further risk you should prevent further data to be you know you should at least protect the remaining data if there are any right you should protect the data and you should take remedial measures you should assist in investigation right you should you should uh, help in remediation of the same and then of course you you will not spare me of course i will not be spared this is the initial thing that we need to do when data protection is there then after that comes your indemnity and your limitation of liability where i will be held liable in a court of law for data breach and i'll have to pay penalty okay there are many other clauses but these are the three important ones that you would typically so when you read your online terms and conditions when you when you see data controller and processor it is nothing but your it is needed for your personal information the last right the last slide the reason i put it as a separate slide is because gdpr is very important your pdp our next law is based on the general data protection regulation 
right? It was passed by the European Union in the year 2018, right? And it says anyone who accesses information of a person in the European Union need to comply with. You may be in any corner of the world, right? You can be in even even in the remotest countries that you can ever see. But if you are taking information of a person who is in the European Union, you need to protect his data under the GDPR. It is that strict. Okay, it is, and that is why we all we all fear, fear now, right? When we think of doing an agreement with European Union companies, we think twice because we we cannot just put in our fingers into the into the deal without knowing we have proper backup to protect personal data. If not, what happens? I'll tell you in the last point because that is where the whole thing comes. The next one is right to be informed. What are the salient features of GDPR? Right to be informed. When you're taking someone's data, you need to tell them why I'm taking it. Is it for medical? Is it for political purposes? Right? Is it for educational purposes? I need to tell what reason your data is being used. Right? And the next one is consent. Obviously, consent is a must. Without consent, you cannot take a single alphabetical letter from them. It is that strict. Right? Next one: return and or delete data. Now, once your work is done, once your purpose of is done, you think you can just keep the agreement? Maybe in India you can, right? In 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 European Union you can't. You'll have to return it back, or you'll have to take their consent and delete it. Before deleting it, you'll have to take their consent and then delete it. It is that strict. And, and um, once the purpose is done, you'll have to return everything and show proof that you've kind of returned everything, right? Next one is implement appropriate technical and organizational measures for security. As I said, GDPR even tells you what technology you need to have, right? At what level, what ISO certification you need to have to protect your data, what companies need to do to protect your data. Okay, it is that strict. And some of this may be, I'll be happy if it is implemented into our, our uh, PDP law, right? And immediate notification of breach. As I said, if there is a breach, you need to immediately notify. Even if you're on the wrong side, you need to notify them immediately, right? And there is also a requirement that every company should have a data privacy officer, a DPO. It is a must. If you're, you may not have in India, but let's say you got a deal from a company in, in which is in the, which is in Europe, you cannot take their data if you don't have a DPO, a data privacy officer who ensures his only job is to ensure that all parameters are complied with. All your data is, is kind of protected. Okay. And the last one, which is, which is the most, right, just before that, yeah, the last one, look at the last one. This is what everyone fears, right? If there is a breach, your, your fine can go up to $10 million, 70 crores Indian money. Okay. And if you are an organization, it can go up to 2% of the entire global turnover, right? Entire global turnover. If your global turnover is 100 million, right? Or 1000 million, 20 million will go there. Okay. It is that strict. And because of this stringent policy, 70 crores is not an easy thing, right? If we, if we get a project, let's say our companies get a project for about some 50 crores and you breach their privacy, you'll have to pay 70 crores more than what the project value is. Right? It is it is that strict there. And that is why it is taken very seriously. It is taken very seriously. Hopefully, we'll have similar uh, uh, similar penalties because for us, for us, it's a big amount, but for politicians and all companies, five lakhs is not a big amount in India, right? But I hope the penalty goes higher. And this is the draft model that that our the, our PDP law is looking into, right? With that, I hope I've not bombarded you with information, but with that, I I complete my session, but if there's any questions, I'm happy to take it. Anyone, anyone who've joined online, if you have any questions, more than happy to take your questions. I think we're right on time. Yeah, yeah. Any, any questions from SDM? Yes, sir. We have questions. Our students into our question. Please, please. My mobile phone. They'll answer. They'll answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Narsimha Pandari, SDM Law. So the question. Yeah. yeah. So the question. So the question that I have is. See, we are forced to give 
Yeah, about that. So my question was, um, when we use applications these days, we are uh, literally forced to give our consent, uh, consent, uh, like access to our contacts or access to all our information, unless and until we, we don't give them consent, you're denied to use, like you're denied from the usage of that application. Now, right. is there any development regarding this? Because see, once you start using social media, I'm, I'm telling personally me also, I can't go back to not using social media. Now, when Instagram, for example, you talk about something, you're shown ads of it directly the next hour or next hour or two, you're, you're giving given ads of that. So you are used, you are forced to give your consent to all of your data. And if you don't, you're denied the usage of the application that happens even with gaming applications for that matter. So is that, an, is there any counter to this coming up or uh, is, is it? Yes, that's, thank you. Thank you. Rasma. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a very good question. Right. And I have your answer in, in, in two forms. Okay. First one is I'll, I'll tell you what happened when other was, uh, you know, when it became a fundamental right. Paytm, right? Paytm said for your KYC, Aadhaar was mandatory, right? Then it said Aadhaar, but immediately when the judgment came, right? Everyone, refused, even I refused. I refused to give my Aadhaar card, right? Then Paytm changed their KYC policy, right? They changed their KYC policy and it is not Aadhaar now. Aadhaar is optional now, right? Even, even now, right? You have your right. Your data is your right. If you want to give your Aadhaar, unless and until it's for a government purpose, you need not give your Aadhaar. You have the right to say no, right? But again, I understand your question. Your question is, right, without giving that, we cannot move ahead, right? Especially, especially your uh, uh, social media platforms. It is developing in India. Yes, without giving data, you cannot move ahead. It won't even, you know, take you further. But as I said, it is, it is developing in India. In, in US, it is already prevalent. There are already class action suits against Facebook, against uh, Google, right? Uh, the Senate has already questioned them, right? It's already questioning them about all of these things, right? Singapore has already questioned them, right? In India, the framework is still as not strong as what, uh, you know, we, we have in the States, right? There, people, it's common to file a class action suit and get, get yours, uh, this one done. But as I said, in India, I'm not saying that you should file a class action suit. In India, when we have a proper data privacy uh, law in place, right? An ordinary, an, an ordinary lawyer can even file a normal suit, right? Now it's your fundamental right. You can even file a writ petition, right? And question companies' credibility in protecting information if you think that your information is actually compromised, right? We are, with the current laws in place, yes, we may do it, but it's difficult to prove, right? And it's, it's easy for the other companies. The reason I'm saying this is, I'll give you a simple example. Why did we ban Chinese apps? You think we did not have data privacy, no? We could have kept Chinese apps, right? But the government went ahead and, and banned Chinese apps. Why did they do it? They did it because our data privacy law says that it is applicable to any person who is outside of India, provided the information is taken out of Indian network. The network should be in India. All Chinese company networks are outside of India. Right? So tomorrow, even if we fight a legal battle, it is easy for them to kind of get away. They will say, according to Indian law, it needs to be Indian network. My network is in China. My network is in Finland. So I am not eligible to come under the purview of your law and they can get away with that. And so basically the answer to your question is, Nasima, we are just waiting for the PDP bill, as I said, right? The PDP bill is, I've seen some of the salient features. It is, it is exhaustive. It is based on our GDPR, okay? And once we have that in place, okay, an ordinary lawyer like you and me can, can file, file a suit and hold companies and individuals responsible. But for then, till then, I mean, we will, we will have to live with it, but at least don't compromise your other, other data, right? Your other data is, is, is one-stop shop, which has your biometric, your name, your, uh, uh, your date of birth, Right? your address, everything is, is, is in one place, right? And there is no compulsion from a legal standpoint to give your Aadhaar card to anyone. There is no compulsion. You can actually question them. And as lawyers, we should actually do, right? You can actually question them. And then, um, you know, you can ask them to kind of use some other mode. But yes, we are there, but not yet. That is, that is the answer that I have. Anyone else?
question, question. Can I see if it tells No question from our side. Okay, thank you. Uh, from the JSSLC uh, students, while the Q&A session is on, I request, I request all the participants to fill in the feedback forms as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So now I request Ms. Apurva to propose the water banks. Okay, I myself uh, wanted to know uh, with regard to the increase in the the cyber crimes. Yes. With uh, in relation to the data uh, theft of data. So what is the way out? Like you said, yes, we are there, but uh, not there yet. Again, ma'am, cyber crime uh, again falls into a different. Unless and until your cyber crime is related to personal information, it would fall under the purview of uh, uh, you know Information Technology Act. If not, uh, cyber crime actually comes into a different angle. But having said that, uh, the punishment for them for both are the same. You will have to rely on your uh, IPC. Um, you know, typically it is Section Four Not Three or Five to kind of uh, give punishments for the same. Cyber crimes is a big thing because you cannot stop it only by law, right? You need to you need to be technologically sound, right? Nowadays, uh, government hackers, legal hackers. Uh, in, in governments are becoming more and more. Companies are actually hiring legal hack hackers on, on a regular basis. Why? Because when someone is hacking your data, only a hacker would know how to stop that data. Right? So the answer to that is technological development, which we are still there. But again, hackers are, are getting smarter day by day. Um, uh, we, we couldn't stop, stop the dark web. No one in the world could stop the stop the dark web. It is still running uh, uh, in, in a big way. But uh, from a, from an Indian standpoint, uh, to to be uh, to kind of stop cybercrime or at least to minimize cybercrime, what we need to ensure is we need to take reasonable steps wherever needed, right? Okay. So we uh, typically we need to don't give additional information if needed, right? If it says. If it says online that you need to give an information and it is optional, please don't give that information, right? Limit your information to wherever possible, right? Don't have, don't have your, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you're not using a particular account, yesterday I got a mail from uh, eBay. eBay, we were using eBay, you know, years, many years back. But yesterday I got an uh, email saying that if you're not, we've seen that there's inactivity in your account, please close your data, right? I should have done that long back. Right. If I've not done that, my account is sitting idle there. Right. And even if I know if it is stolen, then I can't have control over it. So, I mean, from a from a layman standpoint, hold your information, give information as and when necessary, give information only when it is needed. Right. And from a from a legal standpoint, the only answer to that is again, we, we need to rely on more technological advancement and for a new PDP law, not only a PDP law, we are also looking for an enforcement agency. Right, a law alone will not suffice. We are also looking for an enforcement agency, which, like the GDPR, has, which can actually help us tackle all these crimes or have a one-stop shop. Like, for example, the IRDA made it very simple by uh, the Ombudsman made it very simple for banking queries. IRDO also has a simple mechanism for for all your insurance-related queries. So, if we have something like that, uh, it would be useful. Man. But from a layman standpoint, the only thing I can say is give information only when it is needed. Right? Don't underestimate your information. It is more valuable than what you are. So now I request Ms. Apurva to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, so good afternoon to one another present here. So I 
Good afternoon to one and all present here. I, Apurva Narige from second year LLM, take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. So I, on behalf of the institution, thank the Chief Executive Professor K.S. Suresh and Principal Professor Dr. S. Natraju, sir, JSS Law College, and Principal Dr. Taranath, SDM Law College. So I also thank all the faculty, the PG and the UG students as well. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the speaker, Mr. Karthik Shantakuma, Corporate Legal Counsel, for gracing the lecture. I also thank Mr. Madhukuma, Systems Manager, and his team and his team for the safe support. I would also thank Mr. Subhulakshmi, uh, SDM Law College, for helping in creating the Google Forms. So lastly, we hope to collaborate together in the forthcoming interviews. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, the resource person, uh, Mr. Karthik uh, Santa Kumar and uh, Mokishri, madam. Thank you all for uh, helping. Yeah, you're most welcome, uh, Shaima. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.